This tutorial will show how to use the T-Splines for Rhino plugin to create this dolphin from start to finish using a box modeling workflow. Now when doing a box modeling workflow it's important to start with good reference images. So at the beginning we've created some reference images and then we'll place them in the scene using the Rhino picture frame command. With these in place the next step for doing a box modeling model is to start with a box. So we've used the TS box command, turned symmetry on in the options, and then added enough faces to describe the curvature of this dolphin. So now we'll move the, the model into place and then toggle from the smooth T-spline view, which is the actual how the actual surface looks, we'll toggle to box mode, which you can see is is boxy. And the benefit of this is that it's a little bit faster to work with and also allows you to more easily see the topology, the, the faces, edges, and vertices of the model. So in box mode, we'll use the T-spines manipulators to position the control points in a way that they follow the curvature of the model. So we're using the, the T-spines translate and uh, scale manipulators here and we're toggling back and forth between them using hotkeys. You can discover the, the T-Spine's hotkeys by typing in the TS options command and the hotkeys will be active as long as the T-Spine's heads up display is on and that's that that box in the top right hand corner of the active viewport. So as we're moving the, these control points around um, we're just shaping out the the general shape of the dolphin. You can see that we've skipped the fin as we'll do that later by an extrusion and now that we have kind of the, the boundary of the control points done we'll just move the control points in the middle to make sure we have some control positioned near the interior features such as the side fin and the face. So now that we've we've completed this in the right view now we switch to the top view and we'll do the exact same thing. Now you can tell by, by the green line in the top view that this is the axis of symmetry in the model so we only need to work on control points on, on one side of the model and the control points on the other side of the symmetry border will update automatically. So we'll just complete this just as we did on the side. It's okay to move the control points up closer, just like that. And now that we've we've done this in both the top and the side views, we'll switch to the T-spine smooth mode to see what the actual model is looking like in the perspective viewport. And we can move control points now in the perspective viewport to give a little bit more nuanced curvature to the model. So now we'll stay in the T-spine smooth mode and you can again you can toggle between the smooth mode and the box mode either by by hitting the TS smooth toggle command or just by hitting tab when you when you're in T-spine's edit mode with, when that display box is up in the right hand corner of of the active viewport. And now that we're in smooth mode, we will just go ahead and and again position the control points so that they are alongside the so, that, so they're, that they're lining up with the borders of the reference images. So it's, we can get a, quite, quite close to the actual reference image here. And, and the nice thing is we have such few control points that it's easy to keep the model fair as we're doing this positioning. So the next step, now that we have the general shape of the dolphin body, is to make the dolphin nose. We'll do this by using the T-spines extrude command, and this will actually add new geometry. So we've selected the so two T-spines faces, and now we just hit the T-spines extrude command icon, and we can repeat this, and we're actually adding geometry to the surface. And the nice thing about adding geometry through a T-spines extrusion is that this new geometry is still connected to the rest of the surface and it stays smooth. So even as we're moving these control points around, 
there won't be any kinks or gaps or cracks between the nose and the rest of the body. It's just one single smooth surface. So just as we shaped out the, the main part of the dolphin body by doing it first in the right view and then the top view, we'll do that same thing with the nose. So we got it done in the right view and now we're moving to the top view and moving those control points into position. And this technique works quite well so you can look in the perspective view now of getting the correct shape by working in it just in the orthogonal viewpoint viewports. The third step now is to add some more detail to the face and we'll be using some new T-spines commands for this that we have not used before. Uh, this is the T-spine subdivide face command and what we'll do is we'll, we'll subdivide all the faces in the entire model using the exact mode. So the surface has not changed at all but we've just added some more detail. Um, when you do that in exact subdivision it will turn symmetry off so right now we're just making sure that all of the control points along control points along the symmetry plane lie on the axis of symmetry and then using the TS symmetry command to add symmetry back into the model. So now we're we're back with the same shape of the dolphin model but now we have uh, more more control, more faces to work with. Now we need to add a little bit more control just to part of the dolphin model to add more detail to the face and to do this we're using the T-spines insert edge command and what this will allow us to do is to add more detail just in one local region. This is a unique feature available in T-spines to give local detail and to have it tee off and not continue out through the whole rest of the surface. So the surface will stay curvature continuous smooth at that T point and gives the detail that we need to add some more features in the face while keeping detail away from the rest of the dolphin model so that it's easier to keep that fair. So now as we're moving the control points on, on the one side of the dolphin model, since symmetry is still on, it's updating on the other side as well. And now that we've added detail there, go ahead and check the model. And then we'll add some more detail along the nose so that we can model the mouth. And then we'll use that same process of, of right clicking on the TS insert edge icon. And there's, there's two different ways to add detail to a T-spine. There's the exact mode, which is what we did when we subdivided the faces. And then there is the simple mode, and that's what we've been using here with the insert edge command. Uh, the difference is that the simple mode will allow the surface to change slightly. That's fine in, in instances like this where we know that we're going to be moving the control points anyway. Um, but the exact mode is very useful when you already have the model and you, and you don't want to have anything warp, um, such as we did with the global dolphin shape. We were able to use the exact mode. So now I'll just kind of take a look at how this is how this is looking. Now the the fourth step of the T splines for Rhino Dolphin tutorial is to add uh, the eyes and the breathing hole. So to add the eyes and the breathing hole, we'll do some more extrusions just like we used to make the nose. So we'll select a face and then use the T-spines extrude command and after the extrusion we'll use the T-spines manipulators to move and position the new face so that it lines up uh, with our reference image for the eye. So right now we're in box mode and just kind of roughly getting this into position. And we'll do another extrusion just to add some more uh, detail and give us a few more control points to work with to define the eye. Now we've hit tab to switch over to smooth mode and see what the actual smooth surface will look like. 
And now we can uh, really position this eye and use the reference images to make sure that it's, that it's in the right position for our model. Okay, so now that the eye is looking good, we can just take a look at both sides. And now do that same or very similar procedure to make the breathing hole on the top of the dolphin. So we'll select a, four faces this time. And when you extrude four faces all together, then it will just produce one, one extrusion. If we had selected each of these four faces separately, then we would get four separate extrusions with canyons in between them. But by selecting them all at once, then we just get one single extrusion. So again, we'll use the T-spines manipulators to get the right angle and the right position for this extrusion. Kind of flatten it out a little bit. Move those control points. Then we can move again to the top viewport and use our reference image here to move the control points closer to where our, our reference image for the top blowhole is. We'll switch to face mode again and use the T spins rotate manipulator as well to get that in the right in the right position. Now we'll perform a few more extrusions. So we extruded that out, then we'll extrude this inwards. Then we'll do one more extrusion and now we'll we'll bring the the T-spine's face down. So we've created a nice little ridge there for the dolphin's blowhole. So you can see so that there's some strange shading there from the reference image, but the actual surface is looking nice and smooth. So the next step of creating our T-splines dolphin using the T-splines Farino plugin is to make the fins. Now, the methods that we'll use for the side fins and the dorsal fin and the tail fin will all be the same. Uh, we'll just be doing some more extrusions. So we've selected the faces on the, the side of the model and we've ass actually assigned a hotkey to the extrude command. You can assign a hotkey to any command in the, in the TS options um, window and since extruding is something that we do so often we've just assigned a hotkey to that so that we can uh, rapidly do a lot of extrusions. Alternatively you can also just hit the spacebar or enter key and uh, it will repeat the last command. But we've done those extrusions in the box mode now we've hit tab to switch to smooth mode and we'll move these control points to match the curvature of the reference image. And switch to the bottom view to make sure it's looking good in the bottom as well. So now this is looking pretty good in the top view but we'll see that this is actually a pretty fat fin so if we go to the front view we can select all those control points and scale this to make it thinner and even right where the fin goes into the body again the, the since this is one single T-spine surface then that will still stay smooth as it, as it intersects the body. We can use Rhino tools like the bend command to bend the fins as well and now we'll start that same process again with the dorsal fin so again just selecting faces 
extruding them, then after each extrusion, scaling and repositioning the faces, performing additional extrusions. And, and finishing, finishing this off just like we did the side fins. So that's nicely taking shape. Um, again, we'll go to the the front view because that it's a fat extrusion that we did, and make this more narrow. Then one question that I get a lot with T splines is how to control the radius of the T spline when you have an extrusion. So you see, the this is a very gradual. Uh, curvature change from the main part of the of the dolphin to this th to this fin, and if we want to tighten up that curvature, then we can just insert an edge, and as you insert additional isoparms, then it will really tighten up the curvature. Um, T, -spines, T spines behave just like nerves in that regard, in that where there are tighter isoparms that, or more isoparms that are close together in a single area, then it will give it tighter curvature. So that's what we've been able to do to get get some tight get some tighter curvature going up to this dorsal fin is by adding a new isoparm. Here we can just do some some fine tuning on the on the front part of the dorsal fin. So that's how the model's looking to this point. We'll finish it off by creating the tail fin. And again, just that same workflow as with the other fins. Performing extrusions, scaling, moving, doing more extrusions, rotating the faces and then dragging the center tip out for to get up to the to the, the tip of the tail So you can see that with this T-spine's workflow, there's definitely a lot more point dragging than if you were to, say, loft sections of this body from curves. Um, one benefit, though, that this has over lofting is that it makes it a, a much much easier to keep to keep a nice fair surface because the control point count is so low. can see we only need to work on again the one side of the model since symmetry is on okay so now the complete dolphin has been modeled now we can do just some some final editing so one thing we can do is use some of the Rhino commands, some of the their UDT commands such as bend to give the whole dolphin some to kind of shape the whole body and bend the whole body. So if we if we use the UDT commands and turn on the T spines control points and then do the UDT on the control points, then the model will stay a T spline after after the command. If we were to have bent just the T spine surface without turning on the, without turning on the control points then uh, the T-spine would have been com converted to a NURBS automatically. But here we have our, our final T-spine surface. You can see with a, with a low control point count, at this point we can convert this to NURBS just by pushing the TS convert to RhinoSurf command. 
and you can see how the T-spline is split up into rectangular NURBS regions, but the surface curvature does not change at all. And here is a render of the final model. And you can try out modeling with, with T-spines yourself by downloading a free trial at tsplines.com.